From deep inside the Death Star, I'm Andrew Richards. My name is Mark Rosinovich. <laughs> and I'm Andrew Mason. And welcome to Defrag Tools, the show about Windows internals and Microsoft internals and very common sys internals, like we did last time with this WHT. Two guests this week, Mark and Andrew. Tell us who you are. I think most people know who Mark is, yeah. but say who All you right. are anyway. So I'm Mark Rosinovich. I'm a CTO of Azure. More importantly, in the context <laughs> of this show, I'm the founder and author of the sys internals tools. Yep. And I'm Andrew Mason. I'm a program manager in the Windows Server and Services group, where I'm in charge of Nano Server. And so we're going to cover both today. Talk about Nano. Yeah. So we have a bit of an announcement today. You can see on the slide behind us, um, Sys Internals is moving into the server Nano world. So maybe Mark can explain what that actually means. Yeah, well, Nano is a new version of server in 2016 that Andrew works on. So I'll turn it actually over to him <laughs> to talk a, a little bit about Nano, and then we'll come back to the tools. OK, so Nano is a super small, lightweight version of Windows Server. So it's an installation option of standard and data center. Uh, it's about 400 megabytes on disk. It runs Hyper-V, um, DNS server, scale-out file server, web server, and um, failover clustering. So it's a great host for your cloud data center. And um, because it is so lightweight, it has fewer services running, fewer ports open, and so it gives you a much greater, uh, much smaller attack surface. So this is kind of like evolving the idea of like, what was originally uh, server core, yes. and we just kept making it smaller and smaller and smaller. Exactly. And so what's the main differences that obviously people will see between core and, and nano? So nano server is completely headless. So you have to manage it remotely, other than a little recovery console that allows you to fix, fix your network. Cool. Um, so what are you PowerShell mm -hmm. remoting or your MMCs or remote web GUI to so what did that mean to the system internals world? Why did why do system internals need changing because of that? Yeah. Well, so uh, many of the tools didn't have command line versions, or some of them didn't. And so, uh, as part of the porting process, we've created command line versions of some of the tools. But uh, in addition, they have to be made easy to use with PowerShell remoting. And so, one of the behaviors that they had was to spit out text to standard error, and PowerShell shows all that in red, which is mm. scary to people. So we had to fix that. But more critically and the, the hardest work was refactoring the tools to work with the Nano API surface because Nano is a stripped down version essentially of Windows, so not all the full richness of Win32 is there. So Nano, uh, so the tools had to be factored so that they weren't calling APIs outside of Nano. So do the tools have both supports, like you know, they link to the basics that everything has on every operating system and then optionally add in additional features, or is it actually a split it's, in the code base? So it's actually pretty cool, because the command line tools that work for Nano, uh, one, of, one of the things we did in preparation for this is break out the tools to 64-bit standalone executables. So in the history of sys internals, the, I've tried to make it easy for people to use on regardless of what operating system they're mm -hmm. on. So many of them are what I call fat binaries, or what people call fat binaries, where they embed the drivers as well as the 64-bit versions of themselves. So mm -hmm. if you launch the 32-bit version on a 64-bit OS, it'll extract the 64-bit executable and launch that. So now it kind of like chains the command line down that's to the right. child. Yeah. yeah. Now the, there's no 32-bit no. right. subsystem on Nano. Correct. So. It's 64-bit only. Yeah. So, so this forced us to say, oh, we need to pull out the 64-bit executables if somebody wants to run them on Nano. They need to run the 64-bit versions. So the 64-bit version would still have the sys file within itself, though, extracting right. a 64-bit yep. sys file. Yeah. So that, that kind of fat binary concept still kind of exists, but it's just a little yeah, bit more lightweight. Yeah, it's just the 32-bit, 64-bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So uh, how did you choose the tools? Was it just purely based on need? Was it based on just technical availability to do it? Or how, what, what was the, design, the, de the decision well, process? So it, certainly it was the most popular tools that we said those are the high priority ones. And then basically the, the Nano team helped out, actually did most of the porting work, and they just run a MOOC uh, through <laughs> the tools and basically ported yes. all, all the stuff. command line tools. <laughs> yes. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, and we've had a lot of customer requests for various yeah. tools for helping them troubleshoot as they're moving their stuff over to Nano Server. So yeah. we prioritized those. So what were some of the, the main new ones for, in the command line sense? So like what got a, a new command line tool? Uh, one example is not my fault. So not my fault's actually used by support, and in some cases, to intentionally crash a machine. Yeah. So not my fault C, a command line version of that now works on Nano, not my fault C64, that will enable somebody to intentionally crash Nano if they want to capture a dump and something's going on. So it's very useful when control, scroll, scroll, and those other keystrokes haven't been set up prior. Correct. And so you've got this last just-in-time chance of, yeah. of crashing a server. A reliable way of crashing your mm -hmm. server. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, how about the, the the big boys like Process Monitor and Process Explorer and all those things? How, were they all considered? 
They're considered and actually we're, we've got projects underway to see what kind of command line versions of those we can create. Yeah. Uh, that's something that I've kind of had off and on through the history of Sys internals. Now Process Explorer, a lot of that functionality is in list DLLs and handle yeah. together. So it's not, you know, uh, there's some functionality specific to Process Explorer, so there perhaps will be a, a Process Explorer specific version that will wrap it all together. Um, and Process Monitor, you can execute remotely, mm -hmm. um, you know, have it in a headless way to uh, capture log files. Yeah. So that capability is there, uh, but we haven't specifically f pulled it out and targeted Nano with that. Yeah. Does, does things like boot tracing work with Process Monitor under Nano? It would. Okay. I mean, not to. You it's, say not, it's not part of this release. Yeah. yeah. But so that's, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a state a headless, not headless, a, a non UI that's experience. Right. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So uh, should we get into some demos? That's what's always the cool thing to do with. So. Yeah, sure. So Na something. Yeah, Andrew will show us Nano first. Right. In so, action. So Nano in action. Yeah. I want to say Nano, Nano. <laughs> yeah. So here I am. Yeah, Mork and Mindy. Mork and Mindy, yeah. Bef before we started, I set up a PowerShell remoting session in the Nano server. So Sysint demo is my Nano server machine. I already established a connection. And there's this um, registry key that you can query on your machines. And this has existed since server 2012, and it was in 2012 R2 as well. Nano server is a new level there, but this could be used to determine if you were on the desktop or if you were running on server core. So yeah. we added nano server to it. So with your scripts or tools or whatever, there's an easy way to tell and uh, adjust your behavior based on what you're running on if you want. Yeah. So like Mark said, nano server is a very small headless machine. I will, uh, so first I'm going to start by running uh, DU64, and you'll notice as we do the demos, they all have 64 stuck on the end of them. Yeah, and here. And in fact, if you're on a 32-bit box, oh, sorry, on a 64-bit box that su traditionally supports 32, you'll see this in Presses Explorer. Like if you run yeah. Procmon, you'll see Procmon mm -hmm. to XE and Procmon 64 to XE as a child. So it's just really you're seeing the this extracted version yep. kind right. of natively. They've, they've yeah. been set free. Right. Is it free? <laughs> yes, they've <laughs> been set free exactly. And so the first time you run a particular tool, you'll notice there's a dash except EULA. If you don't, if you don't run. Include that, it will spit out the EULA on the screen and tell you to add that switch. So, you know, as Mark mentioned, Handles is available on Nano Server. <coughs> Works fine there. List DLLs is available. So, you have all these great sys internal tools available to monitor and manage your Nano Server machine. That's cool. Yep. And the other thing you can also do, um, we do have um, Open PowerShell, or sorry, we have PowerShell. We have SSH working against Nano Server as well. So, you can go download this and install it on Nano Server. And so you can connect in. And there I am in my connected to my nano server machine again. And if I run du64, yeah, that's so see. fast. Yes, <laughs> super speedy. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot installed on that yeah. machine. <laughs> not much to enumerate. See. Right. This particular image has just under 600 megabytes. Does it, does, do you pick up uh, hidden files as well? So you would see the page Picks file and all that stuff? Yep. So yep. Uh, some of that's going to be page file too, yes. so that's yep. even more impressive. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, what, what's next? What, what else can you Well, I, I think one of the tools that is popular in cloud worlds and also server <laughs> infrastructure is PSPing for mm -hmm. looking at network-related issues. So just quickly show a demo of PSPing coming out of Nano. Yes. And we did a PSP episode only a couple of episodes ago. We finally yeah. got around to it and, and it was driven by your need to, you know, investigate Azure and everything else, yeah. right? And you needed this millisecond accuracy pings uh, and bandwidth things. tests and latency tests. And then also the, the um, you added the awesome ability to choose the port so you can ping yeah. where you normally can't ping where ICMP's blocked, so you can do port eighty and, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. There's there were standalone tools like TCP ping mm. which would do that, but PS ping wraps it all up, does ICMP. Uh, TCP pings as well as uh, latency and bandwidth, like I mentioned. So if we go to uh, this, this is a laptop here that is uh, sitting on the same network as the Nano virtual machine. I've got a command here that is going to tell PS Ping to listen on the IPv4 address for this laptop, a Mason X1, on port 5000. This dash F says to open the firewall port in the firewall rules if it's not already open, and the dash S says act as a server. So that will allow clients to connect to it and do tests against it. So now that we've got it waiting on port 5000 here, we go back to the Nano Oops. installation. And uh, I think I've got the command here. Yep. So the first thing I can do is just do a uh, port ping on that 5000. 
That's the uh, IP address that. Okay. Before you hit enter, let me just yeah. pull this window back up again. Oh, yeah. So you'll see the server here is seeing the connections and then seeing the connections closed as the PSPing client is just seeing if the connection works and then dropping it right away yeah. and then telling us how long it took. So you can see anywhere between 5 milliseconds and 100 milliseconds on across the network, and this is on wireless yes. as well. Then uh, we can do something else, which is to, to actually look at a bandwidth test across the, wire, the Microsoft network through wireless here. So this command right here says to PSPing, do a bandwidth test, make the packet size 64K, this number of iterations of sending that packet, print a histogram of the latencies, or the bandwidth, sorry, uh, after you're done, and use this IPv4 address here. And so now... And you can see the 65,000 bytes. that's going to take too long. <laughs> yeah, 10,000 yeah. 10, a bit too many. Yeah. So we can just uh, take that down by an order of fact, uh, order of magnitude here. So this is um, serial, or is it um, is they one after each other? No, it's actually yeah. doing it all in parallel. In parallel. Yeah. Okay. And so you can see we got a average bandwidth of around 8 megabytes per second. And you can see the histogram goes from around 5 megabytes per second up to 11. Yeah, there's a bit of a bell repeat. curve there, kind of yeah, right. grows up to the 7 in the middle then. Yeah. And actually, yeah. it's got two little spikes around the 7 and the 6. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's cool. Here. And obviously, if you do it longer and longer, you're going to have more and more accurate yep. uh, sampling. Yep. So a key tool for working with nano and in a uh, data center infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another tool that I have to show, and it's one that then Jeffrey told the nano team explicitly, do not port this tool to nano. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, zoom it. No. <laughs> yeah, zoom no. It. So, <laughs> that'd be a trick if I could get yes. someone to work on nano. Headless, that would be uh, a, operating system. That would be a trick. Yeah. <laughs> um, but all the, the fonts just get bigger, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, but uh, Jeffrey, of course, the father of PowerShell and PowerShell remoting, he thinks that's the first class way to actually interact with Nano. And he wanted to ultimately kill PSExec, which is the tool that I created back around 2000 years ago. And yeah. is still very, very popular in enterprises yes. for connecting remotely. Very. So, uh, like I said, he told the Nano team, do not port PSExec. I want to kill that thing. And so I went and ported it myself, uh, just to spite him. <laughs> and so here we've got PSExec. We're going to open a command, remote command prompt against that nano system here. And this will take a few seconds. This is uh, in installing a uh, service on the nano machine. Yeah. If the service was already installed, this would be much quick, much more uh, uh, quick Performance. here. Yeah, uh, performant, I guess, yeah, the Microsoft word. Good. Actually, I noticed that actually that's now in the dictionary. It is in the dictionary? Yeah, because my, my uh, wife was harassing me when I used to. When I joined Microsoft, yeah. that I was using this. Not word. the Urban Dictionary or the Microsoft. <laughs> no, dictionary. actually, it was in yeah. the. It's in. I think I saw it in some dictionary.com yeah. or something. Yeah. But um, yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah. I can now go to my wife. It's in the dictionary. It's in dictionary.com. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I heard that when I joined Microsoft in 2006. Everything yeah. was performant. Yeah, I had never yeah. heard the word before I joined. We like yeah. to make up our own words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I so here we go, morning, so. and you can see uh, if I do a host name, you can yep. see we're sitting here on the Nano machine, and uh, so. You've got full access to do anything hello. you want, really. Yeah, I uh -huh. can say hello, Jeffrey. <laughs> and uh, there. So <laughs> there's uh, PS Exact on Nano. Cool. So uh, anything major else? It's in the tool set. I mean, there's lots of the simple, you know, list DLLs, all that stuff mm -hmm. was there. And I think in general, you could probably get away with. I think you've covered the vast majority of what you need, right? I mean, mm -hmm. in the absence Definitely. of Presses Explorer, for example, right. yeah. there's all these yeah. alternate tools. And quite frankly, what what you've learned from this environment, you can actually use anywhere, right? You don't have to be stuck with this UI mm -hmm. environment outside of Nano. It's not something that, you know, you only should do it this way in yeah. Nano and, and keep yeah. it the UI elsewhere. Yeah, Definitely. exactly. Anything great learnings from the experience? Well, the porting process, porting process was a, yeah. a learning, actually, uh -huh. for both of us, the Nano team and and yep. me and Microsoft in general about what it takes to port things to Nano. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I will um, go ahead and do a little. I've got the, the tools on my laptop here as well as the tools we use to help us analyze them and do the porting process. So, you know, sys internals, I'm going to show PS ping here. Um, the first thing we did was we have a tool called nano server API scan.exe. We post that out on the internet. That's the same tool we have available externally that we use, the dev teams use internally to figure out how to do mm -hmm. the porting. 
And you know, as you guys were discussing earlier, the first thing we discovered was, well, this is 32-bit wrapper that then extracts into the 64-bit version. So we have to get a true 64-bit only version to be able to do this because Nano Server, like I said, is 64-bit only. Yeah. So you can see there was a bunch of APIs it was calling that aren't <coughs> available on Nano Server. So it shows you where they were located in the system and in some cases a possible substitution. So oh, that's cool. that gives you a pointer to them. But the other thing we have on Nano Server is this um, functionality called reverse forwarders. So a lot of these APIs are functional, except maybe if I can get the dialog box ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but a bunch of them for accessing the registry and the file system and stuff exist in Nano Server, but they've been moved from the higher level APIs like user 32 or kernel 32 down to lower level DLLs that exist in Nano Server. Mm -hmm. And so reverse forwarders are little stubs that will take that API call and send it off to the right yeah. place. And I've never been able to figure out why you call them reverse forwarders, not just forwarders, uh, uh, but yeah, because that's what the, the team that developed <laughs> yeah. them came up with the name, and we yeah. didn't let marketing get involved. Yeah. So <laughs> reverse forwarders stuck. So if you then if you then run it with the reverse forwarders, you'll notice that it is pretty much clean. That's cool. Everything needed was was available there. And if you look at the reverse forwarders, you'll see you know these are all stubs that exist on the system. If I compare my my user thirty two on my Win ten machine here to the user thirty two reverse forwarder, you know. Size Oops. difference quite a bit, you know, quite, a, quite a size difference. So like 1.4 meg versus 25k. 25K. Yep. Yeah. So it's just purely stubs that just yes. forward calls. Forward calls down to. So you don't have to relink your code to where the APIs now live. You can run against yeah. kernel 32. And it's not really forwarding 32. through there. It's actually the loader saying, oh, this function yes. actually lives over here. Right. And then it patches up the import table of the yeah. target right. to point at the yep. ultimate location. So. Loader magic. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. Awesome. Exactly. Cool. So that tool's available, the Nano Server API scan on, on our Nano Server blog for anybody to use. And like I said, it's the same tools we use internally as we're trying to port things. Yep. And actually, what about the availability of system tunnels where it will just be on systemtunnels.com at some point? Yeah, so um, by the time you see the show, there will be 64. So if you take a look at the uh, compatibility section up on the top right of the pages, it'll say supported on these versions of Windows and higher. That's going to say supported on Nano mm -hmm. Server 2016 and higher. and the zip files will include the 64-bit versions, so those are going to be nano compatible for those tools that are nano compatible as well. And there's a new suite zip file. So there's a sysinternal suite.zip, which has all the tools in it. Yep. The nano specific tools will be uh, packaged in a sysinternals-nano yep. suite.zip. And what about live.sysinternals.com? How's that apply? Yeah, so live.sysinternals.com will also have all the 64-bit executables that are nano compatible. And like it, we said our, one of our goals was not to have nano-specific mm -hmm. versions of the tools. The command line tools, if they work on nano, they also work on full server. Yeah. So or even client. The PS thing you yeah. ran was the, the yeah. nano version. So if people have been scripting system tells, and we know they have been, do you suggest that they change to the 64-bit one just to save that unpacking phase? Yeah, now that they're, it's, they're already I mean, there? it's at their discretion, right? Yeah. If they're <coughs> living in a 64-bit only environment, then no harm to just switch to the 64-bit tools. But the optimization. Yeah, muscle memory, like I have muscle yeah. memory, so I will be using this <laughs> yeah. yes. standard 32-bit ones. I will be typing yeah. proc dump to the yeah. day I die. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, yeah. so that's about it, I guess. So as always, put your comments below and email us at defragtools at microsoft.com to give us questions and answers. Mm -hmm. uh, anything to do with this, I'll just happily forward on to Mark. And I um, hope you enjoy it. Yeah. Before uh, you, we go, I wanted to mention one more thing oh. about the tools, and that is that uh, Aaron Margosis and I are working on the next edition of the Sysinternals mm. book, and that should be out in about a month, month and a half uh, or so. And that will include, of course, some discussion about nano compatibility. Awesome. But it's a major revamp of the last version, so lots of new content. You, you have this habit of making new tools and changing features and stuff. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's what I do in my spare time. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Keep awesome. myself occupied. <laughs> Very cool. Um, the Channel Line Studio has been closed for a while. We're actually moving building. We're getting a new swanky new uh, studio actually next door. So we will be off, of, off the air for a uh, couple of weeks, maybe a month or so. So we'll see you then. But there's 160 plus episodes in the, in the history that you can go watch if you, if you want to find something. But uh, yeah, thanks guys for coming right. in. Thanks, thanks for, for having us. us. And uh, we'll see you next time on Defract Tools.